Hi everyone. So it is getting to be that time of year again really soon and I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to find some of these items if you're interested in making some of these projects on a budget. So for today I'm going to share with you 16 brand new DIY Dollar Tree Christmas home decor items that you can make and also at the end I added four that I did last year that were some of your guys's favorites. So without further ado let's get into it. For the first project, I didn't want to just only give you guys projects that came from the Christmas section in Dollar Tree because those are not all created equal. So both of these pieces actually came from the home decor section and the crafter square section and we are going to make some hollowed out wooden trees. The supplies I used were three of the wooden triangles and two wooden containers. The first thing I needed to do was make these triangles hollow. So all I did was I took some wire cutters and used extreme force and they popped right off. And then I just repeated that step until all three triangles were hollowed out. Next, I'm just going to take some medium grit sandpaper and just sand down the backs. It's not something you're gonna see anyway, but just to give a cleaner finish in the end. With all three triangles hollowed out, one is going to be stacked on top of another and then one is going to go directly to the wooden container. So I did use my miter saw to saw off the top piece of one of the triangles so I would be able to connect two of them together. You could probably eyeball this next step, but I just wanted to make sure that the bottom of the triangle was in the center of this wooden container so then that way it wouldn't look lopsided and I just did so by using some wood glue as well as adding the smallest amount of wood glue to attach these two pieces and this is how it turned out. For the next project, I really wanted to make some hanging sleigh bells and I've seen multiple high-end decor sites selling this for a pretty penny and I knew I'd be able to DIY it for way less. So the thing about the Dollar Tree is sometimes their choices in materiality to make it a dollar are obviously not up to par. So I removed that um, rope cording that they had all around and I removed all of the ribbon that they used. So I basically just took it down to its bare bones so you just had that ring around and then the bells left alone. I also picked up some additional bells just because I wanted a little bit more and you can get four of these medium sized bells for just a dollar which is such a good price. So after I removed those top pieces from those bells I had all the bells that I needed and my blank slate to make my hanging sleigh bells. So instead of using their yellow cording, I'm choosing to use twine, which is a much more natural material, which fits my aesthetic so much better. So I'm just wrapping it around until I don't see any black. You could probably spray paint this tan first, or if you wanted to wrap it in macrame cord, I think that would be very pretty as well. But I just wanted to keep it like my inspo picture, so I decided to use twine. And now I'm going to add some twine to each of the bells, and then I'm just going to kind of stagger them so they're not all hanging at the same length. If you're having a problem with the twine, even after you tie your knot, if you're having a problem with the twine sticking to the bell, you can add a little bit of hot glue. I don't like to add a lot of unnecessary hot glue because I think that makes your projects look really cheap. So um, less is more, but overall I didn't have this problem this time, but I have had it in the past. And after you tie your knot, just snip off the excess uh, twine so then it just doesn't look messy and it's nice and clean. And the next step is one that I had my husband do because I'm prone to disasters and I was afraid. So um, he just burned those little fibers that weren't like necessarily essential to this DIY project. So he took care of this part. But if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. And this is how our hanging sleigh bells turned out. For the next project, I really wanted to make some modern metallic trees. And the first thing I did was I picked up the tinsel trees that you can get for $1 and they're actually a really nice size. So I just removed all of the tinsel until I was left with just the bare bones of the tree. 
So afterwards, I just snipped off those little prongs at the bottom so it was nice and flat, and I gave it a quick coat of Krylon's Metallic Gold spray paint. I'm going to spray paint it probably two to three more times after this step, but just to give it a solid coat at first. Taking some more of those bells that we used in the previous DIY, and I'm going to attach one bell at different heights because I did three different trees at different heights to the center of each Christmas tree. To attach the bells inside, I'm going to be using actually what it came with, um, and I'm just going to cut it down to size at three different levels. Rather than tying a knot, um, I was able to just attach them with the smallest amount of hot glue. And I was able to slide that cording right through the top because there's a little slit there for where the tinsel used to go. And this is how our modern metallic trees turned out. For the next project, I really wanted to make a wreath, but I didn't want to make the typical Christmas wreath. So I'm going to show you what I did. I took this bicycle wreath form from the Dollar Tree because it's just what I had on hand. Any wire wreath form will work for this project. So I'm just starting out by removing all of the prongs inside and just leaving a half moon shape at the bottom. Other materials that I used were some red eucalyptus. I had this sort of camel colored ribbon as well as this suede ribbon. So what I'm going to start out by doing is just kind of arranging this eucalyptus that I cut down to size and applying it in the shape of like that half moon. So then that way it looks very similar to my inspo pick with some slight changes. To attach all of the floral, I use primarily floral wire, but I also use some zip ties in the points where I feel that it's most necessary because sometimes the floral wire can get really flimsy and I want some like good secure hold. So I used the dark brown suede for the top piece and I'm using this sort of like terracotta orange color to attach the bells and then tie it in a bow. And this is how our wreath turned out. One thing I will not spend a lot of money on is festive word art at a big box store, especially when you can make it for so much less. So all I picked up from the Dollar Tree were some Christmas cards and this frame here, it's a four by six, it has the mat already inside. You cut it down to size and there is your festive word art for $2. You can make these big, you can make these small, it is whatever you choose. For the next project, I wanted to figure out a way to display our holiday cards because we get so many beautiful cards and my mom actually found this picture at a garage sale and they were giving it away for free. She loved the artwork but didn't want the frame, asked me if I wanted it and of course I said yes. So she took the picture to go get reframed and I'm left with this linen mat as well as a gold frame. Now this is what inspired this DIY from the Dollar Tree was this twine here and they had all these very colorful little clothes and I decided that I was going to use my natural ones that I have instead of the colors, but I love the suction cups as well as the twine concept. I just started out by laying the twine in a way that it would give me enough space in between each row for each card so it wasn't just like one on top of another, and then I used the natural clothespins instead, but attached them using these suction cups, and this is how it turns out. For the next project, I really wanted to make a pillow for the holiday season, and I found this flower sack in the kitchen section, and it almost feels like linen, so I thought, let's give this a try. I actually picked up this little hem stitcher on Amazon, so I'll link that in the description for you guys. It is something you need to practice with, but it works really well, and it actually saves a ton of time when you just have like one little stitch you need. 
Using this tool, I'm going to sew the left and right side as well as the bottom. And once those are sewn using this special tool, I'm going to flip the pillow inside out. And then where that opening is, I will place the insert and hand stitch that side. And once the pillow is inside, this is when I like to personally add my application of whatever like heat transfer or iron on. And that's just because I wanna make sure that it's in the center of where it actually is and it doesn't end up all wonky. Also, I should mention this graphic actually came from Amazon and it was, I think about $6. So very affordable and here is how it looks. Next up, if you know me, you know I love anything that I can hydro dip. So I thought, now I know this is just gonna be for decor because I don't know what would happen if I actually lit these on fire. And like I said, I'm prone to disasters. So I picked up these candles from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking a bucket of water and then just lightly spray painting some metallic gold spray paint on top and then dipping the candles. And you will have something that looks similar to this. Another really easy little faux marble project is to make a faux marble raised platter. Platters are very common to use during the holiday season, especially while you're entertaining. So I took this faux marble bowl as well as this small plate and I'm going to attach them using some E6000. One little thing I wanna mention is you wanna make sure that your E6000 is just on the rim because um, if you apply it in the middle of the bottom of the bowl, it's not going to attach well because the plate doesn't meet that point. So just make sure that you're applying your adhesive wherever it's actually meeting and you will have a much better end result. And you can do some heat transfers on here. If you have a Cricut, you could use that, but you know me, I like simple, so I just left well enough alone. Next up, I wanted to make this fluffy white tree for my daughter's nursery, actually. I thought it was like such a cute thing. I actually saw it, I think on CB2, and they were selling a set of three of these for I think $89, which I just can't justify spending that much money on something so temporary. So I took two of these scarves from the Dollar Tree as well as one of those tinsel trees. I removed the tinsel like I showed you before, and I'm just going to cut a slit in the seam where the infinity scarf met. And I thought I was going to be able to get away with just buying one, but in order to completely cover the tree, you do need two. I would actually say you probably just need one and a half, but I used all two just to make it extra fluffy. Warning, it does make a mess. Um, so just do it in a place where you don't mind cleaning up all those little fuzzies. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just literally wrapping the scarf all around this cone tree shape. When it had come to the point where I had one scarf all the way wrapped around, but I still had more to go, I just tucked the excess in inside, which was really nice about having this sort of like hollow tree to work with. And using just really to cover the bottom like third of this tree, I cut another slit in that scarf and I'm just wrapping it all around and adding a small amount of hot glue to the back to secure it. Next thing I wanted to make was a macrame bell or like a rattan bell. So I picked up these larger size tinsel bells at the Dollar Tree. You get two for $1. And again, I'm just removing that tinsel. It's really easy to do. I like doing this because you're getting the shape, you're getting the structure, but you're taking away what you don't like and you can add and customize it to your liking. So this is what you're essentially left with. One thing I wish I would have done was just painted it white just so then that way it wouldn't be noticeable when I was like wrapping around the macrame cord because that was one thing that was a little bit um, irritating to me. But just if you do this project, make sure you do that as well. And I did take some cord that I found at the Dollar Tree and you would have enough of this cord to do both bells. So actually it's a really nice price. You get two macrame bells for just $2. And when you come to the bottom, I just kind of wrapped it around more tightly than I did previously, added a small dab of hot glue, and then I gave it a little bit of excess and I tucked that excess inside of the bell. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I wanted to make a natural woven tree and these woven trees can cost so much money and I just wanted to do it on a more affordable scale and show you guys exactly what I did. If you happen to pick up any of these hats during the summertime, this is what I end up using for this project and I'm not gonna go super in detail because it is very similar to other items that I've made in this video already, but basically I am just going to break down this hat until I can get individual cords on their own. And then I will take those cords and apply them to one of these tinsel trees yet again. So I would say if you have more bohemian style, um, this would be a really nice project for you to put in your house because I can guarantee you it probably will pull from a lot of the baskets and things that you have going on in there already. Now that the brim of the hat has been separated, I'm just going to attach it to that little slit there with the smallest amount of hot glue and I'm going to continually wrap it around until I finish and get to the very bottom. And I only used glue at the tippy top and the very bottom because like I said, I don't like using unnecessary glue because you always end up seeing it. So just use as much as you need to complete your project. Next up, I saw these snowflake tea light holders and I thought they were pretty cute already, but I don't like all of the sparkles. So um, I did have one of these wooden containers left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this on top of it to just give it a little bit more height because I bought two of these little snowflakes. But first I want to paint the snowflakes a chalk white. So then that way there's no more sparkles. And I'm also going to paint the wood a chalk white paint. And for these, I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue and find the center point, and this is how they look now. So my son is super into animals and reindeers, and that's the part I think he's most excited about for the holiday season. So I've had these little two houses in my stash, so I decided I was going to use the one on the right. And again, just like I did in the first project, just popping that back right out using my wire cutters. You could probably use a hammer or something else that's really like heavy duty. And again, using some medium grit sandpaper to the back just to remove all of the paper that was there previously. And I am going to actually just leave this alone, no stain, I'm not gonna paint it white. But the deer that you can find at the Dollar Tree actually doesn't stand independently. It's kind of like flimsy, kind of wonky. So I am going to apply a little bit of hot glue to the feet of the deer so that way it can stay inside of the house as well as off to the side. Next up, I really wanted to use the hats that they sell at the Dollar Tree because they're actually pretty cute little knit hats. So what I'm going to do is take one of these baskets that I recently picked up as well, and I picked up two of the knit hats and I'm going to pretty much just wrap this basket with the hat fabric instead because the plastic just reads cheap and I think a knit fabric will always look more expensive. So to start, I'm just going to remove that elastic that's at the top that cinches it for the hat purpose. And so then that way it's just kind of more like tubular and I can easily slide it on the basket. And I did end up needing two hats. If you want to cover that top rim, you'll need three hats. So I was fine with that top piece showing, just not the entire thing being plastic. So um, there's going to be a bad side and there's going to be a good side. So I am always trying to cover up what's bad. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I didn't end up using any adhesive for this project at all, but if you absolutely want to and you just want like a really secure hold, I would recommend doing that because um, it is kind of like a tight, like a taut fit. So if you want to make sure like everything stays put, you can absolutely choose to use adhesive. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just sliding the hat all the way up until it meets the rim of the plastic basket. So um, that is why you need to just because the hat's not long enough. and. Um, you'll have a little bit too much fabric at the end. So instead, when you pull it really taut, you can kind of still see through it. So I decided to ruche my fabric. And I know some people think that that looks messy, but I think it just kind of reads a little bit more cozy, especially during this time of year. So I'm just ruching the fabric until it's still straight, but I'm happy with the end result. 
And then rather than cutting anything off, I'm just leaving the bad side underneath the basket so I don't have to like sew anything or do anything. It's just gonna be tucked away underneath. And then I'm just getting the hats to kind of link up the pattern so that way it looks just a little bit more cohesive. And that's where the ruching really helps with that as well. So you just gotta keep messing with it until you're happy with how um, the fabric is looking on top of the basket. The next project is another fabric or knit project and I wanted to make a sweater hurricane base but this time instead of using a sweater like I've done previously, no adhesive, all I'm doing is I'm taking this leg warmer I found at the Dollar Tree and I'm sliding it over one of the hurricane bases and it is a little bit long for the shorter vase but it fits pretty well on the taller vase. And you can embellish these further. I chose to do a little bit of that suede ribbon around the taller one and this is how they turn out. We are just going to try to replicate something from Pottery Barn that all it is is some frosted pine cones in a pedestal bowl using all Dollar Tree products. So you really only need a few items from the Dollar Tree to make this DIY happen. I just took an old candle that I had bought previously, melted it down and removed the wax and I'm just hot gluing the bottom of that cup to the bottom of the bowl. Feel free to always use E6000 for something that has a stronger hold, but this is gonna be on a shelf. No one's gonna be really touching it, so I thought hot glue would work just perfect. Because the one that I saw on Pottery Barn is gold, I decided to also give mine a quick coat of gold spray paint, and now I'm just going to fill it with a combination of pine cones that I've had from previous years, as well as the scented pine cones that I found from the Dollar Tree. They smell like cinnamon, they smell like Christmas in a bowl, literally, and they just look so festive, and this was only $3 for this DIY. barn but this one absolutely blew my mind maybe it's just because my husband's family is a family of hunters and we live in an environment where there's deer everywhere so I could not believe how much they're charging just for individual antlers at Pottery Barn I think it's something like almost $30 per antler and you can literally find these outside if you live in this sort of area where there's deer everywhere they shed their antlers every year and it's no it's not painful you're not doing anything wrong by using these antlers and they are 100 percent free so my father-in-law brad was so sweet and he actually mailed me an entire box of these antlers because he's always outside doing stuff and he found them so all i'm doing here is i'm just hot gluing two ends together just to give it a nice secure hold around this hurricane base to replicate what i saw on pottery barn's website and then also taking a dollar tree candle and putting it in the hurricane base so i know they're charging about 99 dollars for something that looks pretty similar to this which is crazy because you can literally get this for under two dollars For this next project, um, I like how it turned out and I, I made a mistake and I still wanna share it because I think that's part of DIY. Um, for this one, you're gonna need a fish bowl glass from the Dollar Tree and again, I'm using my Mod Podge. And basically at Pottery Barn, they were selling this sort of like textured glass hurricane vase and they had a sprig of pine coming out of it, which I thought was super cute. So I tried to get a textured effect on this glass by pretty much just drenching this glass in Mod Podge and I soon realized that I applied way too much. So I got the effect, but I got way too much of it. So my advice to you on this project is less is more and I guess you can always probably build as you go, but I did wanna share this with you anyway. I'm not super happy with how it came out just because it is too much texture for me. Um, you can still see through it, but I would like a lot less like how theirs looked. So just a learning lesson for you guys. Don't make the same mistake I did. One thing that I did find was helpful to remove the bubbles is to take a blow dryer on a low setting just to kind of disperse some of that Mod Podge um, 
and make it look a little bit less DIY. And for our last project, we are going to be making this bell candle I saw on Pottery Barn's website again. And to do this, you're going to need two bowls from the Dollar Tree. I just picked up the white ones that they always have there. They're not seasonal, so you should be able to find them. And basically, we're just going to kind of set one off to the side like how they have it. I did end up buying three of the Dollar Tree candles. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is taking some Goo Gone that I also found from the Dollar Tree and just removing that label because that label will be showing. Um, if I just spray paint right over it. So I just wanted it to look really finished. Then I melted down all of those candles and we are going to be pouring them into the one of the bowls. Now I did give these bowls a quick coat of spray paint just because that's theirs was also gold, but you can tailor this to whatever you like. If you wanna do a white Christmas, paint them white or just leave them alone. When you do melt the candles down, make sure you're doing it on a low setting and you know, Slow and steady wins the race. I have made a mess melting down these candles, so I finally figured out a way to do it that doesn't make an absolute mess. Also, keep the wick out of the wax that you're dipping it in by just taking a kebab stick and wrapping it around the top. I only ended up doing two of the candles and that got it pretty well full. I didn't want it to be filled up to the max because I knew the other top bowl was gonna be sitting kind of on top of it, so this seemed to fill it up just perfect. And while that wax is drying and setting into the bowl, it's just time for me to now build the handle that goes on top of the other bowl. To do this, I'm actually just gonna use some clay that I had. It doesn't matter what color it is because I'm going to be spray painting it the same color that we spray painted the bowls anyway to look like the Pottery Barn one that I saw. Um, if you don't want to go out and buy clay, you can actually make your own clay. I will link in the description the recipe that I use whenever I need to make clay if I'm out. And after I've molded the clay to look like a little handle like how theirs did, I'm just kind of messing with it to make sure it's going to fit just right because you do have to bake this clay, which I like. Honestly, I think it speeds up the time for this DIY project versus air dry clay it takes a really long time to dry. I did want to fit it to the top of the bowl just because I wanted to make sure that it was going to sit right. So I did end up kind of having to cut off a little bit to make sure that it was at an angle and it wasn't just going to be like flat and not fit exactly right and you would see a big glob of hot glue. And while that is in the oven baking, I just am going to cut the wick down to make sure that it's not super long like you see here. And this is how it turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching my top 20 Dollar Tree Christmas DIY compilation video. This will be the only Christmas video I do for Dollar Tree home decor DIYs. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.